experiences. Hi everyone, in today's video we have some news. So four people have been charged in connection with assisting an offender, the offender being Connor Chapman, who is the killer of Ellie Edwards. They expected the trial of four suspect accused of assisting an offender in relation to the murder of Ellie Edwards to begin. As we know, beautician Ellie Edwards was 26 years old when she died after being shot brutally outside the Lighthouse pub in Wallasey on Christmas Eve in 2022. Connor Chapman was convicted of a murder in July last year following a trial. And after we followed the trial, he was later jailed for life with a minimum of 48 years. But now two men and two women have since been charged with assisting an offender in connection with a fatal shooting. So who is who in court? In courtroom 52, the trial was listed to begin at 2pm. Katie Appleton and Isabella Den White appear for the prosecution. David Chambers is represented by Daniel Travers and Desmond Lennon defends Danielle Dodo. Christopher Stables will be appearing on behalf of Paul Owen while Martin Snowden will be representing Roxanne Matthews. Mr Justice Morris will be presiding over the trial. As the defendants were brought back into the dock, Danielle Dowdle sits down on the far left and wears a black coat and grey scarf while sporting blonde hair tied back in a ponytail. Roxanne Matthews is wearing a blue jacket with red hair while David Chambers sports a black jumper over a grey shirt and short brown hair and a beard. Paul Owen is seated on the far right of the dock and he wears a black jacket over a light blue shirt with short grey and hair. Judge Justice Morris takes up his position and the defendants speak to confirm their names and the hearing was ready to begin. At the start of the trial, a jury selection begins. So potential jurors were asked to fill in questionnaires before being selected to serve. After the judge rises to let that continue, he re-enters the courtroom and the hearing resumes. Procedural matters will first be discussed with counsel. Mr Justice Morris takes up his position again and he says 18 of the 50 who have returned questionnaires of the jurors can be selected to serve on the jury. They will be whittled down to just 14 jurors, two of whom will hear the prosecution's opening as reserves. This selection process will take place tomorrow morning and the trial is adjourned until 10am on Friday. As day two begins, everyone's in position in courtroom 52 and the case listed to begin at 10am. All the defendants are brought back in the dock and Justice Morris takes up his position and they were ready to begin. But the judge required further inquiries to be made in respect of the jury panel and directs these to be undertaken. He rises again in order for this to take place. When the judge re-enters the courtroom, the jury selection will now take place on Monday, with legal discussions to be heard over the rest of the day. When everyone appeared next in court, they were back in courtroom 52 and the case was listed to resume at 12pm. Potential jurors have then been asked to complete a questionnaire in order to determine their suitability to serve on the case. As those were being processed, legal matters were also being discussed. The judge then rise to continue looking at the jury questionnaires. After a few more discussions over legal matters, and they are concluded, the process of selecting a jury can then begin. A panel of 18 potential jurors are brought back into the courtroom. A jury of 12 will be selected, as well as two additional reserves who will hear the prosecution's opening. Justice Morris says, thank you very much for your patience. We are now about to begin the process of swearing a jury in the case. As we now know, there are seven men and five women that are balloted in the jury. They'll be joined by two men as reserves. The defendants are asked to stand and are read the names of the jurors. 
members of the jury are sworn in to serve in the case. The jury are then told the defendants are charged with assisting an offender. The single charge in Doldle's case alleges between December 24, 2022 and January 14, 2023. She had in her possession and assisted in the disposal of clothes worn by Connor Chapman during the murder of Ellie Edwards. Matthews is charged with three counts of assisting an offender, which alleged that, on January the 9th, 2023, she hired a VMT Cross vehicle in her name to be used by Connor Chapman and booked a lodge at the Sycamore Spa in Wales. She is meanwhile alleged to have harboured Connor Chapman in her home between December the 24th, 2022 and January the 14th, 2023. Chambers faces two charges. One alleges that he collected, possessed or arranged for Danielle Dodal to take possession of clothes worn by Connor Chapman during the murder of Ellie Edwards for the purpose of concealment or disposal between December the 24th, 2022 and January the 14th, 2023. The other alleges that, on January the 9th last year, he arranged for the hiring of a VWT cross in Roxanne Matthews' name for the use of Connor Chapman. In Owen's case, his single charge alleges that he assisted in disposing a Mercedes A-Class used by Connor Chapman during the murder of Ellie Edwards on December the 31st, 2022. The jury are told that each defendant has pleaded not guilty to these seven charges. Justice Morris says the case will last for about four weeks and tells the jurors you have the responsibility of deciding whether the defendants are guilty or not of the charges that have just been read out to you. Cases involving the death of an individual may give rise to strong feelings. You would not be doing your duty if you allow emotion to affect your judgment. Only you 12 who has listened to the evidence together are entitled to reach a conclusion together. It's no one else's business. Your discussions take place in the strictest confidence behind closed doors. You decide the case on the basis of the evidence you hear in court and that evidence alone. Miss Katie Appleton says there is some housekeeping to complete before the prosecution can open the case. And the jury are then asked to retire with the opening commencing around 4pm that day. The judge re-enters court. However, further procedural issues need to take place before the case can be opened. Miss Katie Appleton will therefore open the prosecution's case tomorrow morning on Tuesday. Justice Morris speaks and he tells the jury, We have had our first matter arisen, which is a matter for me to deal with. As a result, given the time of day, I have decided it best that the prosecution start afresh tomorrow morning. He asked them to return at 10.30am on Tuesday. The next day, the defendants are in the dark and they have taken their seats. The jury are brought into the room by the courtroom usher and also take their seats. The court is reminded of the prosecution and defence counsels. Miss Appleton, prosecuting, says, On Christmas Eve 2022, Ellie Edwards went out with friends for what was supposed to be an enjoyable night out at the Lighthouse Inn at 11.47pm. She went outside for a cigarette. She was in a group just outside the front door that included Harry Logren, Nicholas Speed, Liam Carr, Jake Duffy and Kieran Solcold. A stolen Mercedes A-Class car on false number plates had been parked in the car park for a little while. At 11.52pm, Connor Chapman got out of the car, walked along the building line and opened fire at the group of people congregating at the front door. All six of them were hit by bullets. Connor Chapman was using a Scorpion submachine gun, which is a Czech firearm designed for the security services in the army. The intended targets of the shooting were Jake Duffy and Kieran Solcold. But although they were injured, Ellie Edwards, 
a wholly innocent bystander, was killed by two bullets which entered the back of the left side of her head. Connor Chapman got in the stolen Mercedes and drove it to private drive in Barnston, midway down to the Wirral. Connor Chapman's friend, Thomas Waring, was living at number two. Connor Chapman parked up in Overdell Avenue. He then walked towards his friend's Thomas Waring's house, dropping the Scorpion submachine gun on the ground en route. The gun used in the murder has never been recovered. Thomas Waring was not at home when Connor Chapman arrived there, but he soon arrived in a taxi. At 47 minutes past 3am, Connor Chapman adjusted the position of the stolen Mercedes and drove it towards Thomas Waring's house. At 52 minutes past 4am, Thomas Waring ordered a taxi from his home address to Ford Way in Wirral, and six minutes later the taxi arrived. The taxi was for Connor Chapman, and the drop-off address, though not his address, was close to it, and at 21 minutes past 5am, he went to the back of that address, that being 165 Hewton Road in Woodchurch. On the 31st of December 2022, the stolen Mercedes E-Class that was involved in the murder was burnt out at the Hover Force site in the remote area of Frodsham. Mobile phone cell site evidence shows that two people involved in driving the car there and burning it out were Connor Chapman and Thomas Waring. On the 9th of January 2023, Connor Chapman travelled to Wales in a hire car and stayed at the Sycamore Spa, both booked by the defendant, Roxanne Matthews. The following day, Connor Chapman was arrested at a Tesco superstore in Newtown in Wales. Prior to Connor Chapman's arrest, the prosecution say that Daniel Dodal, Roxanne Matthews, David Chambers and Paul Owen assisted Connor Chapman in evading arrest, intending to impede his apprehension or prosecution. The prosecution says that Daniel Dodal took possession of the bag of clothing worn by Connor Chapman during the murder. On the afternoon of Christmas Day, David Chambers who is Connor Chapman's uncle, collected a bag of clothing from Connor Chapman and took them to Daniel Dodal. You will see David Chambers arriving at 165 Hewton Road at 46 minutes past 2pm and then leaving a couple of minutes later, heading in the direction of Daniel Dodal's address. Daniel Dodal had possession of the bag of clothing until the 13th of January 2023 when she dropped them off in Rock Ferry, at the address of David Chambers, then partner Melissa Mason. The prosecution say that Roxanne Matthews harboured Connor Chapman after the shooting, at a home address until he left to travel to Wales on the 9th of January 2023. Earlier that day, Roxanne Matthews had booked a hire car, a blue Volkswagen T-Cross in her name, from Six Car Rental and booked the Pennywill and Lodges Sycamore Spa in Wales. David Chambers drove Roxanne Matthews that afternoon to the Six Car Rental to collect the car. Two hours later, Connor Chapman and Danielle Jones, Connor Chapman's partner, left the Wirral and drove in the hire car to the lodge in Wales. David Chambers, as you know, the prosecution say, took possession of the bag of clothing, Berghouse fleece and trainers, worn by Connor Chapman the day after the shooting and took them to Danielle Dodal's home address. He also drove Roxanne Matthews to collect his hire car, the VW T-Cross from Six Car Rental. The prosecution say, on New Year's Eve, Paul Owen lent Connor Chapman his motor vehicle a grey Mercedes GLC, registration number EX6AEYJ, so that he could dispose of the murder car, the stolen Mercedes A-Class. As we know, Connor Chapman drove in convoy with Thomas Waring to Frodsham, where the stolen Mercedes A-Class used in the shooting was burnt out. 
Connor Chapman and Thomas Waring drove back to the Wirral in Paul Owen's vehicle, parking it near to Connor Chapman's home address. Well, why did the prosecution say that Connor Chapman was shooting at Jake Duffy and Kieran Solcold? We have to look at some of the history of the trouble in the Wirral, predominantly between rival groups from the Woodchurch estate, just to the west of the Junction 3 of the M53, and from the Ford estate to the east of the M53 of just outside Birkenhead. The relevant events are as follows. On the 26th of October 2022, a ganging junction was served on Connor Chapman of the Woodchurch Estate. On the 16th of November 2022, a further ganging junction was made and served on Connor Chapman following the expiry of the first one. And on the 23rd of December 2022, Sam Searson of Woodchurch was assaulted by Jake Duffy and Kieran Solcold both of them from the Ford estate. Duffy and Soulcold were shot by Connor Chapman at the Lighthouse Inn and let's piece all of this together. In October and November 2022, Connor Chapman was made the subject of gang injunctions which prevented him from associating with, amongst others, Sam Searson, Jake Duffy and Kieran Soulcold. On the 23rd of December 2022, the day before the murder, Sam Searson from the Woodchurch estate and someone Connor Chapman was preventing from associating with by virtue of the gang injunction, was seriously assaulted by the two intended victims of the murder, Kieran Solcold and Jake Duffy. The prosecution say that what otherwise might have been viewed as a random or inexplicable shooting, the murder of Ellie Edwards, was obviously the culmination of an ongoing feud between people from the Woodchurch estate, including Connor Chapman, and people from the Ford estate, which included Jake Duffy and Kim Saltcold, who were the intended victims of the shooting. On the 6th of July 2023, at Liverpool Crown Court, Connor Chapman and Thomas Waring were convicted after trial. Connor Chapman was found guilty of murdering Ellie Edwards. Thomas Waring was found guilty of assisting an offender, in that he assisted in disposing of the Mercedes A-Class used by Connor Chapman during the murder of Ellie Edwards.